Car Wars 6th Edition, the first new version of the game in almost 20 years, so how does it play? I'm Chris Steele, and this is Tabletop Game Talk, a show where we talk about tabletop games of all kinds, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Car Wars. Car Wars is a tabletop miniature game, and the same lines as like an X-Wing, Armada, uh, Battletech, those types of games, or Car Wars Classic Edition, if, you're, if you've played that before. Uh, essentially, you are going to build a car, and you're going to run around the table to try to destroy your friends. For last person standing wins. I'm going to show you today mostly the contents from a single two-player starter set, although I'll bring in some other components and we'll cover three and four players uh, near the end of the video as well. So let's get started with how do you build a car. This is a built car and it's relatively straightforward. Um, I have my dashboard, I have some weapons that are equipped to the card, and I have my crew. Let's take a closer look at these different components, and for that I'm going to bring up some images from the rulebook and just kind of overlay it. So here we have our dashboard. This is not the car I have, this is just an example car, but it helps me point out different features here. Um, these cards with the blue numbers in the upper right corner, these are going to be your build cards. So they're literally called build cards and you use build points to build them. In this particular example, we have 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points for this car. Uh, if you're looking here, you say, wait, 3 and 3 is more than 14. This would be 17. Um, this is a double. You take one, you get one for free. Over here, we see this is our crew cards and we have four points of crew. Now, just notice here, we have a safety cage here. This is two more points, so this is actually a 16 point car. This is put into the crew area because it's not equipped to a particular side of the car. We'll cover that in more detail um, in a bit. So what determines these points? Well, you do. You get to decide how many points you want to play um, for whatever game you want. Now there are some guidelines, and this is uh, some guidelines from the book. They might recommend that your first game, for a small game, you play 16 build points, 4 more points, 4 crew points. For your first bigger game, you play 36 build points, 9, or, uh, nine crew. If you look at the uh, scenario guide that'll be coming out, or the car guide that'll be coming out in some uh, sometime in the future, they have divisions 1 through 12 where the division number is the number of armor points and crew points you get, and the division number times four is the number of build points you get. So these are all guidelines. Typically, if you have a 4, 16, 4 car, you're going to play a normal, probably half hour per player type of game. You're going to build your card using those crew points, and crew points you're going to get spend with purple cards here. Now, I have my cards here. Um, they're very similar to the cards that you see up here, but there are a bunch of cards that come in the game and you'll see there's a lot of different options for crew. Um, all of the pinkish purple numbers are crew points and then all the other ones are for your build points. These are just from the core box. There are a lot of expansions for this game already that you can get more cards so you have more options. But there's a lot of options in that base box. Your requirements for crew, you must have a driver, you must have a gunner, that's these cards here for me. And you will automatically start with a sidearm. Uh, the hand cannon is a common, uh, is just free for everybody. It's always available. Um, in my case, I upgraded for one more card here. Uh, that's it for your crew. Must have a gunner, must have a driver. Everything else is optional, and there you go. For your car, uh, there's a few more in restrictions, but not many. Uh, we have these structure cards here. The structure cards give you extra armor on a particular side. You have one structure card per side. Pretty simple. Accessories, you can have one accessory of each name. So advanced breaks, you can't have two advanced breaks, but you could have as many different accessories as you want, you just can't have the same ones. And for frame, or for upgrades, you can have as many upgrades as you want, but you can't upgrade the same thing more than once. So I have an upgraded frame. This is what this says here. I can't have another frame upgrade, but I could have any other upgrades. For weapons, the only restriction on weapons are if you are playing a game that has 24 or less build points, you can't use a weapon that has six or more of the uh, of a cost here. So that's really the only restriction. You need to wait till you have 25 points of build points before you can use the really big weapons. 
Those are your build restrictions. So building a car is actually pretty simple. Um, I want to also want to highlight the dashboard here. The dashboard is going to track your tire damage. It's going to track your power plant damage, how fast you're going. It's going to track the amount of armor you have on each side. And it's even going to tell you how many control markers you have and what your maximum speed is. So let's take a closer look at my dashboard here. This here, I'm at speed two. I see I have one, two control markers displayed and then four more here. So I have six control markers that I can use for whatever turn. As my speed goes up, I lose control. I only have five control at that point. If my tires get damaged, not only do I start losing control, but I also start losing max speed. So now my max speed is set to four. And if my tires are completely damaged, my max speed is set to one, and I get no control markers for having tires. So you can see how the, the dashboard really helps you just track everything at a glance. As armor is damaged, I just move the armor tokens. And if a side of the car gets set on fire, I can just flip the token upside down, and now I can see that that's on fire. So that's how your dashboard is going to work. We'll cover all of that in more details uh, in a moment. But this is a driving game, so I think the first thing we want to cover is movement. Let's see how that works. And the key to movement is really the turn key. This is your turning key right here. Um, this is going to be everything you need to make any kind of move or maneuver or turn. Everything's right here. Uh, if you've played X-Wing or something like Gaslands, you know that there's moving templates and you have to grab different templates and move. This handles it all with one. So let's take a look at how this works in practice. And we're going to use this um, dashboard as an example. So I'm at speed two, and we'll use the yellow car here for our example. All you need to do, my yellow car is here, is I'm going to hold the yellow car, I'm going to place my turn key next to it. The back of the turn key is going to line up with the back of the car, and the front, there's a pivot point here, is going to line up with that front mark right there. To move one speed, I move one. There you go. But I have two speed here, so I have to do that again. Now I've moved two. That's, that's movement. That's as easy as it gets. Now this is what we refer to as a low risk move. There's no dice rolling. There's nothing, nothing bad can happen with moving forward. Same thing if you want to make a slight turn. And what I didn't show you is these bases are hollow or basically there's a gap underneath them so they can slide over the turn key. So as I move forward, I can slide this over and make a slight turn. And now I'm just slowly turning as I'm moving across the way. But moving slowly and, and turning slowly, there's not a lot of space in these arenas. So you might sometimes have to make what we refer to as a maneuver. In this case, we're going to come up and we're going to start covering this green, yellow, red, and white area. And we can cover any amount of it we want. We can turn here, that's fine. But what we want to pay attention to is any part of the colored pieces we cover is going to cause us to have to roll some dice. So in this particular case, I covered the green and the yellow. So I'm going to need to roll a green die and a yellow die. I'm going speed two, so I'm going to need to roll two yellow dice on top of that for my speed. You can tell yellow dice, speed is yellow. So this is going to be our control roll. I roll the control roll, and I get two skid markers. Skids are bad for control. We don't want to skid out. So what happens is I'm going to lose two of my control to tokens. That's okay. The whole reason to have control tokens is to be able to make these maneuvers so that you can skid out or you know roll some skid dice, but not go out of control. When you run out of control markers, you've run out of you are now out of control, and bad things happen. Another thing happens though when I make a, a maneuver. Every time I make a maneuver, and you should do this before you roll, just so you don't forget, you get one of these ace tokens. What's happening is you're ducking, weaving, zigzagging through the arena or roads or wherever you happen to be driving. And as you do, these tokens will allow you to maybe dodge some incoming fire. And we'll see what that does in a future, uh, in, in just a minute. Now, another symbol could come up on the control roll, and that is this wrench symbol. This wrench symbol is kind of a generic symbol. It's used for a lot of different things. And for control, it's bad. You don't want to see this because whenever you see this, you've actually taken a point of tire damage. Something to know, 
yellow dice do not have any wrench symbols on them. So if you make, if you're rolling yellow dice on a control, you're not going to do any damage to your tires. The green die though has two of these symbols on it, and it's the first thing that happens when you start turning. So just keep in mind that you have, you know, one in, or two and six chance, one and three, of doing control or tire damage once you start making those turns. But one more type of maneuver we can make is a slide. And the way that works is we're going to take this part of the key and we're going to slide it under the car. So it's lined up here. And again, you can kind of, this locks in place nicely uh, letting you know, it's like, yep, it's where it's supposed to be. And you're just going to slide the car to the other side. Then you pull it up. Now, what these turns are, are D1, D2, D3, D4, difficulty-ish. The slide is a difficulty zero. And in that case, you're just going to roll your speed dice. And again, I can't take any tire damage from that, but I can still lose control. That is how moving works. Everything you do with moving is all based on the key. You're going to move and then turn, or you can slide. Every point of movement that you, you must use every point of movement, and every point of movement starts with a move forward and a turn, or you can slide. So, but no matter what, you must use all your movement points and that's movement. Now, if you are at zero tire damage and you roll, or zero, yeah, you have zero durability on your tires and you roll a wrench, you don't take any more damage. Um, you don't have any tires to damage. So just keep that in mind. You're already only maximum speed of one, uh, which would put you at here. And yeah, it just can't hurt you anymore. So that's something to note. Let's take a closer look at these dice. So there are three different icons on the dice, and we'll show them like this. And there are six different colors of dice, which we'll show here. Each of these dice have a different probability to, of different symbols coming up. And we're going to see a lot of different places where these dice are referenced, and they're going to be referenced with usually a color and a number inside of it. Our turn key does not have numbers inside of it. It's always one. But every place else you see this, you're going to see uh, some kind of number. If you don't see a number, again, you can presume one. Our hits are always going to be great for attacking. They are nothing for maneuvers. They're nothing for defense. Our shields are bad when we're maneuvering, but they're great when we're rolling defense. This will cancel out a hit. And like I said, our wrenches are kind of a generic uh, for maneuvering. They're bad, but for attacks, they're usually typically good. They're going to add some kind of extra damage or some kind of special damage. Let's take a look at the probability of these dice. Now, this is a chart that is not in any uh, printed material from the Car Wars box. This is something I put together just so I had a reference of what was what. And Really, when you look at this, you can see that, you know, red has a pretty good chance of being defensive for you, and so does blue. When, you know, half of the sides are going to have shields, where yellow has a really good chance of doing damage, um, but also, you know, a one in three chance of rolling shields. You have your wrenches, and then black's great if you want wrenches. White is the most swingy die. It has the, each side has a symbol twice, so you have one star and two star, you have one shield and two shields, and you have one wrench and two wrench. So they can be really swingy. You'll get to know the dice as you play around with them, but don't worry too much about the dice right now. Um, if you are interested, I'm gonna do a full build guide, which will go into the strategy of how the dice work and you know what cards kind of synergize with others. So uh, check that video out if you really wanna do a deeper dive into the dice. So. Not all good things come from moving. What happens if I run out of control? Well, let's take a quick look at uh, spinning out of control. And we are going to assume that I just made a roll like this. So I'm about to, we'll say I'm at speed three. Actually, we're gonna, we'll do it this way. And all right, speed three, and we're gonna do a really hard turn. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go green, yellow, red, white, plus my three white dice. So I'm rolling a ton of dice. This is a 90 degree turn after all. It could be really bad for us. And it turns out it is pretty bad for us. 
because the stars don't matter for control move control rolls, but these shields do. So first thing, I'm going to take a damage. Um, right now we're going to put it back up here. So I'll take a damage for tires. There you go. And then I need three control tokens to spend there. Well, I only have two. So I can spend the two, and then I'm going to take a tire damage for each control token that I don't have that I need to spend. But I've also spun out of control. Now, spinning out of control means that we're going to go to this chart here, and the chart's fairly intuitive. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I just turned, oh, I don't know, this way. So I'm going to have to keep turning that way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my marker here. And because I was one shield short, I'm just going to keep swinging back a little bit. So I just kind of slid out of control. That's okay. Awesome. But I'm out of control, and now I don't get any defense dice for speed. And any future movement that I would have to make on this turn, I can only drive straight. I can't even make slight moves. Only drive straight. If I were to need five shields worth of uh, control and I don't have that, well, then I spin out of control all the way here and my car flipped upside down and I'm eliminated from the game. Uh, it's a relatively rare thing. You'd have to be very, very careless to not have that much control to not or that many unspent shields but it can happen and if it does happen that's one way to be eliminated from the game all right let's talk about attacking we are shooting things after all so i'm going to bring in another car and we're going to assume that both cars are kind of using the same board right now yellow is going to attack red and we're going to look at what arc these cars can attack from so the basic thing you're going to do is say, hey, is yellow in my firing arc on my right side because I have a right gun? Yes, it is. Great. What? So I can hit red because red's in the yellow firing arc on the right side. Now, where I can hit red depends on what arc I am in of reds. So for reds, I am in their side arc, so I can hit red in the side. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say I need two red dice and I need a yellow die, and I'm just going to roll these dice. And whatever comes up, that's how much damage is done. Now, this particular weapon has an additional one for basic damage, so I actually am going to do three damage to this car. And I like to just take the damage out here so that we know how much damage is being done. Now, let's say that the red car is going speed three. As long as they're not out of control, they get to defend and they can roll three dice. And if they roll any shields, then that's immediately gonna subtract from the amount of damage that's incoming. But they didn't roll any shields. If they had an ace token, they could spend an ace token to reroll a die. And there, they got a shield. Another thing is range. For every turnkey distance away they are from the person firing on them, they'll get another free reroll, which you typically use before your ace tokens and in this case, didn't defend. So with one shield, that's going to cancel one damage. The other two are going to go two damage from the left side of this car because that's the car that was that was hit. Let me get this in focus. There we go. That's firing in a nutshell. Now, thing to note, whenever you fire a weapon, you must choose who of your crew is firing that weapon. In this case, my driver was firing the weapon. Why? Because I didn't use the gunner's reroll. Sure. Um, but once he's fired a weapon, he cannot fire again, and that weapon can't be fired again. So now we can fire another. My gunner can also shoot, but he can't shoot this weapon because it's already been fired. That's where our sidearms come in. The sidearms can be shot out of either side from either crew member. So the sidearm gets three blue dice and a black die. And I'm going to again shoot at the red car. The red car is obviously in the same position he was before, so he's at more than one turn key away. And he's still going his speed three, so he still gets that defense. My gunner has an ability, though, that I can reroll two dice. So I roll this. Ooh, that's not great for that, but... We'll talk about the wrench in a second, but I get to reroll two dice, so I'm just going to reroll these two here, and still not great. 
The assault rifle has an ability that changes a wrench to a basic damage. So even though I didn't roll any stars, I still get one point of damage through. Now my red card is going to roll his standard defense, which blocks everything. And that's it. That's the done. That's we're done for attacking over here. That's attacking in a nutshell. The red card would then get a, a chance to fire back at me. And there we go. Now let's talk about special damage real quick. Um, because oh, let me make sure we did it. Ace, ace weapons. Yeah, we heard all that. Um, these are our firing arcs that we just talked about. Again, we're going to check the arcs to see if I can target the car. And then that car, if I am in a particular arc, I'm going to be able to shoot that side of it. All right. If you take damage on a side and you are out of armor, say I take five points of damage. So I'm going to take five damage tokens here and I'm out of armor. I am going to draw from a deck of damage, internal damage cards. In this particular case, I check to see if I have any structure. I don't. I check to see if I have a weapon. There's a limit one here. I do. So I'm going to put a damage token on that weapon. This weapon has two durability. So if it ever takes two damage, the weapon's going to be destroyed. But right now I'm okay. The next thing is crew, also with a limit one. So I'm going to put a damage on any of my crew. All crew have three durability. Once they take three damage, they're eliminated. They can no longer fire. And if both crew are eliminated, you're out of the game. And then the rest of this damage, the three that remains, is going to go to power plant, power plant damage. If your power plant ever goes to zero, you're eliminated, you're out of the game. So those are the three ways you can lose. Your crew can die, your power plant can go to zero, or you can flip over. Besides that, you just keep running around and shooting at each other until you're done. Now, there's six of these damage cards. You can shuffle them up and draw them each time. I actually have a, I put them in a binder page here. And at the bottom right corner of each damage cards is a number. And we just roll a D6 and pick the number. But it results in this, the same effect. All right, special damage. If something says tire damage, this here, it is treated just like regular damage in almost all ways, except for two things. One, obviously, it does tire damage. So that damage, instead of going to armor first, it's going to go to tires first. If you take enough tire damage and you're at zero and you still take more tire damage, it converts into basic damage and that's going to go internal just like any other type of damage. Um, it actually will cover the armor first. So if you take say we're taking damage on the left side, um, I take three tire damage, well, I'm going to lose one here, and then I'll take two more, which will come off the armor, and then any remaining will go internal. That's, that's how tire damage works. It just targets tires first. It is also defended against first. So if someone's rolling a defense roll, the tire damage is defended first, and then basic damage is defended. The next two types of damage, though, fire and explosion, work a little differently, but they work similar to each other. So with fire, the first thing that's going to happen, well, actually, we'll start with explosions first. With an explosion, what's going to happen is the first explosive damage is going to require the target to lose a control token. So you can kind of see over here um, that we have two control tokens. If I take one point of explosive damage, this goes away all the rest of the explosive damage gets converted to basic damage. And that can be defended against as normal. The first point is the only point of that's going to take a control marker away. This can be useful if someone's low on control later in the game. You want to put someone out of control because they're going to be a lot easier to hit and do damage to later because then they won't be able to roll their defense dice. Fire damage works very, very similar to that. What's going to happen is the first point of fire damage is going to cause the car to go on fire and all additional points of damage just convert to basic damage. If the, that side is already on fire, then it just converts to basic damage anyway. So it just straight up converts to uh, basic damage. We'll talk about what fire does in a moment, but that's special damage. That's all there is to it. Um, we just talked about the internal damage card, so uh, we will now talk about targeting. Now. I hand waves a few things earlier when these two cars were targeting each, each other. The side-by-side -side scenario is very simple to understand, and you can see what's going on. But 
I want to make sure that you understand the targeting rules because they're a little different than what you might know from other games, um, but they're pretty straightforward once you have them down. So I'm gonna use some images from the book and this is a image from the targeting uh, section. And it starts out with choose your weapon and then check that arc and see if the car is in the arc. If it is, it can be targeted. That's, that's all you're asking at that point. In this particular case, yellow is saying, hey, I'm in the front arc. Can I target you? We'll just kind of put that here. Um, can I target you? It can target green and it can target red because that front arc weapon can see those cars. Now, where they can shoot the car is a completely different check. Now we're checking from the target's point of view. In this case, can green see yellow? And if it can, from what arcs? So yes, green can see yellow. Green can see yellow from its side arc only. So yellow can only target green side. So if you look from the, the yellow point of view, it can, yes, it sort of can see the front, but there's not enough there for it to get a good target on. So you can only target the side. The same thing applies for red. Red can see yellow through the side arc, but not through the front arc. So even though red can or yellow can target red because it can see the front of the car, it can only shoot red on the right side of the car. And it does not matter that the front arc is not in on the side at all. That was just to decide if you could hit the car. Where you hit the car is based on how the car sees you. So yellow can hit red in this scenario. And what will end up happening is you will have a weapon just basically kind of shoot this way. Little off arc, that's fine. The reason this works is the snapshot, um, the snapshot basically disclaimer, rule, guide. Uh, but there's one other scenario I want to show you just to really cement this. And this is where we have two cars side by side. So this is what we started with at the beginning. We had red targeting, well, in this case, green. Can I target you? Yes, because you're in that arc. Where can I target you? On your side. Well, what happens if green moves closer to red and falls back a little bit? Well, now red can target green with the side and the back because both of those arcs can see them. But I want to shoot from red only my back. So where can green see me from? Well, green can see me from the side and the front. So because I can, the green can see me from the side and the front, I can choose either of those targets from my back arc and I can do this. Now, again, this is, you know, you can kind of think of these cars are going, you know, back and forth, back and forth. So as these are going at some point, that was possible. And that's where our snapshot rule comes in. These rules are to emphasize fun and fast play over physics. Sometimes a car may move in an unrealistic way or a weapon may not be able to shoot a target that it looks like it is pointing towards. It may help to consider the state of the table at any given time as a snapshot of the arena battle rather than a continuous ongoing simulation. When in doubt, favor the defender. So if there's ever like an edge case, like, well, we're not really sure what it is, just favor the defender there and you'll be good. So again, targeting, two-step process, R, is that car in my arc at all that I'm going to use that weapon for? Yes. Okay. Where can I shoot on the car? Where in their arcs am I? That's all there is to it. All right. Let's talk about the turn sequence. And, you know, we talked about movement and attacking, but how do the turns work? So essentially what ends up happening is at the beginning of every round, um, someone's going to have the first player marker. And the first player is going to basically act first in the movement in the combat phases. But the first thing you're going to do is check your speed. If your speed is above your maximum because you've taken tire damage, you just reduce your speed to whatever your maximum is. It's a super quick check. It's not something you're going to do at the beginning of the game because everyone's in good shape. Um, and it doesn't cost anything to do that. You just reduce your speed. Then you're going to take control and ace markers based on the types, whatever your dashboard says at that moment. So in this particular case, uh, let's say I had speed five, uh, my tires are now down to six, well, so my max speed is four. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is decrease my max speed by one. Then I'm gonna count the number of control markers, one, two, three, and I'm gonna take that many 
control markers. There are no ace markers on the board that you can earn, but sometimes cards, usually crew, will allow you to get ace tokens at the beginning, even without making any kind of maneuvers. That's all you have to do for uh, step two, take control. Step three, manage fires. You do this in turn order. If something's on fire, you can either take a point of damage on that side. So say I'm at you know four uh, armor here. I can say, no, I'm just gonna take the damage, so I'll be at three. If I'm at zero, I'm gonna take internal damage. I draw a card and see where that damage is done. Or I can spend two control markers and put the fire out. So these are tough choices because sometimes taking the point of damage is better than potentially going out of control. Um, but hey, you're in a car shooting at each other, so there are tough choices to be made. Next is movement. And the movement phase, you can increase or decrease your speed by one. So if, I, if I'm at four, I can decrease it to three. Note that a control token was revealed. That does not matter right now. It's the beginning of your turn before this happens where you count control tokens. So even if you were here, you'd get these two. And if you go faster, you don't lose a control token. It's beginning of the turn that it matters. So anyway, I can increase or decrease my speed by one. And that doesn't cost me anything to do. If, however, I want to increase it by two, I can hard accelerate. And what that does is it allows me to increase my, my speed by two. And I take one point of power point damage. If I want to decrease my speed by two, I can do that as well. But it's going to cost me one point of tire damage. So sometimes you may not want to run into something, so you just want to like slam on the brakes and slow down as much as you can. Or sometimes maybe you want to catch up to someone or ram them or whatever the case is. Um, that's where hard accelerating and hard braking come into play. And then finally, we get to our combat phase, which again, each crew member can take one shot. Each weapon can only be fired once. Sidearms, Every time um, sidearms apply to both crew, so even though it only looks like I have one sidearm, both crew have a copy of this. So everyone can shoot your sidearm as often as they can, which is twice. Uh, but yeah, that's how combat works. We just covered that. And then finally, it's cleanup. And really, you're just getting rid of any excess control or ace tokens you have. You're going to pass the first player marker, and you're going to go and redo all of this again. Um, honestly, in play, six, one, and two become almost a, a simultaneous action, but knowing that there is an order here is important. You don't have any control or ace tokens that carry over from one round to the other, um, but you'll refresh them and get them back to wherever your board says in step two. All right, let's talk about collisions. Uh, moving around is easy. Sometimes you wanna ram things. So what's going to happen with a collision is it's going to always happen during your movement phase in general, uh, or during someone's movement phase, collisions are going to happen. So what we're going to do here is have the red car collide with the green car. And we'll say the red car is going speed four, and the green car is just sitting there saying, uh-oh, something bad's going to happen. Well, that first speed, one, there we go. We have three movement points left, though. Now, this obviously is not going to fit here. We're gonna stop at some point. So it doesn't actually matter um, how we do this. We're just gonna move forward until we touch. As soon as we touch, a collision happens and the rest of that movement point is removed. Now, both players are gonna lose a control token. There you go. If that control token can't be lost due to um, not having them, then you, you just, nothing happens. Now, at the point of movement here, this player was going speed four. So they're gonna take four yellow dice and they're going to roll those dice. In this case, two damage. Both cars are gonna take two damage. The red player is gonna take two damage to their front. The green car is gonna take two damage to their side. There's no defense roll against that. That's collisions, we're done. Nothing else to do there um, besides continue movement. I've only moved two of my movement points and I have four. So now we're gonna start pushing. And pushing happens in a slow and deliberate way to use the, the way the book uh, references it. Now, again, this is a little tricky with the turnkey. So you're just gonna, going to put it here and just 
move it so you know it's straight. And the reason it's slow and deliberate is because the way that these are positioned, they are going to automatically kind of push things off in, an, in a semi-unpredictable way, as opposed to if they were just rectangular. And doing that allows you to have these very interesting maneuver sessions. Now, I can still maneuver here, too. I just moved forward. So if I want to make a turn, I can do that as well. And the way I would do that is just kind of hover this over. And then I could turn. And I could go, this is a green. This is a yellow. So I just made a D2 maneuver. I'm going to roll my dice, which is a 4 plus a yellow and a green. I'll take one tire damage because of that. But again, I'm still in contact, so I haven't created a new collision point yet. And then I can continue to go forward again. And I'm just going to keep pushing this car until we lose contact, at which point, if I touch again, a new collision happens. I've finished my four points. That's it. That's all the collision. Um, all you have to do for collision. Now, what happens if you collide with a wall? Well, that one's going to be kind of a special case here. Um, we're going to throw, let's put a wall out here. In this case here, walls are removable objects. So I can't keep going straight. I could stop um, or you know break and go in reverse, but if at any point I have forward momentum because I haven't been able to hit the brakes, I'm gonna bounce off this wall. And the way that works is, I literally just bounce off the wall. Um, I'm gonna end up taking a, I've still made a collision. So in this case, if I ran into a wall at speed four, I'm colliding with myself, I'm gonna take three damage here. Um, but then I'm going to lose a control point for colliding and I'm going to place the key here on the side of the car that's furthest away from the wall and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. And that is what you're going to do to get out of that wall situation. If you get stuck or you start bouncing between walls, um, there's full instructions on page 16 of the rule book on how to handle that. But ultimately, that's the general idea. If you're hitting an immovable object and you can't go forward, but you must still need to go forward, you're going to uh, pivot out of that area. Let's cover pileups. Now, I mentioned at the beginning, I was just going to talk about two-player games. And in a two-player game, you're going to tend not to have pileups unless you have other obstacles in there. But um, we're going to bring in some guest cars just to demonstrate how this works. These are not, these are just like normal collisions that you would have anyway. They just have one more step involved. Now, this first collision is going to stop right away. We're going to roll damage, take dice. Now, if I keep going straight, what's going to happen is I'm going to realign. This is my second movement point. Remember, we have four. So I'm going to keep going straight until that second contact is made. Now, the dice that are rolled, I'm going to take the damage. This player is going to take the damage because he was involved in a new collision with this player who's also going to take damage. So all of us will take the damage rolled on these dice. Now, that was my second movement point. If I do my third movement point, now this collision happens. I will take damage. I'm always going to take damage because I'm the one causing the event that's making the collisions happen. But only these two new cars are going to also take damage. Anything in the middle gets there's some padding in there, so they're not going to actually take any additional damage. That's pileups. Simple as that. Um, if you had anything that's a heavy object, which is your cars and any obstacle that says, you know, heavy object type of thing. Um, we also have some rec tokens. Anything that's a heavy object is and is pushable is going to work the same way. So we're using cars as an example because you're going to usually see cars, but that's that's how heavy objects work or how pileups work. Now let's talk about cover. So there are multiple kinds of cover. Um, we actually have full cover. We have partial cover. And then we have cars. And cars act the same as partial cover. So these are the same here. So the way this works is you're going to, let's, let's go back to our original example um, from the book. And here we have yellow still trying to fire at red. In order to check cover, we're going to draw 
all sight lines between those two cars and their arcs. And something I should note, uh, whenever you're dealing with firing um, or any kind of attacking, you are only ever using the square box under the car. The front and back rounded areas of the car are only ever for movement. Uh, aiming and checking those lines, you're only gonna use that rectangle underneath. So for cover, we're gonna draw all sight lines between those two pieces. So this is, this is what I have. Now, right now there's nothing there, but let's say I add some partial cover. Each piece of partial cover, and each individual piece counts, each piece of partial cover counts for one automatic shield that the defender gets. So if the yellow card attacks the red car in this scenario, the red car is gonna still roll defense, but they automatically add a shield to whatever that roll is. For each piece of cover that is full cover, you're gonna add three shields. So in this particular case, same thing, but they're gonna get three shields automatically added. If both of them were there, you'd get four. If you added another one here, but it didn't block line of sight, so they could still see the car through here, well, now you're gonna get seven, because you have three, three, and one. So as many pieces of cover there is going to increase that defense. It makes it really, really hard for the other player to see. Now, it is possible that you have full cover and there's no way of drawing a sight line from here to here that doesn't, isn't blocked by full cover. In that case, you cannot be attacked. But remember, cover is handled at a completely separate time and way as determining whether or not you can attack a car. So there is a scenario here where we have full cover that seems to block that front arc from targeting the red car, but that is a completely separate step. It does not take cover or any type of obstacles into consideration when you're making that check. So in this particular case, the front weapon can shoot the red side, even though there's a full cover object there, it will, however, get three additional shields attached to it. So doing damage is, is gonna be tricky in, in doing that. Um, Finally, the last thing to note is these are cover and they're easily marked, but if I have a car here, this is also partial cover. So if I'm firing from yellow to red, red is going to get an extra shield because green's in the way, creating some cover for them. The last thing is terrain and hazards. Um, I'm not going to cover it in a lot of detail here, just know that there are terrain cards and hazard cards. They're clearly marked. Um, you'll use these particular, basically for some different scenarios, and it's completely viable to never play with terrain. Uh, in a nutshell though, what ends up happening is you're gonna roll extra blue dice on your control moves, control rolls, if you have a hazard that, you know, in this case here, um, says roll two blue dice. Also, if there's a terrain number, it's usually in a circle that ranges from one to four, it's also additional blue dice you're gonna roll typically. Uh, but I'll let you discover those on your own. And that's it. That's how you play Car Wars 6th Edition. Uh, again, it took, you know, there's a lot of nuances here, but really it's just about mastering that move and that attack, and the rest of it just kind of takes care of itself. It's a lot of fun to play with this turnkey and make crazy moves and spin out just at the right time. And sometimes you want to go out of control because then you can spin around a little bit more and you're aiming in the right spot but you don't care that you don't, don't have any control because you don't have any defense if you don't have any control because they can't shoot you and there's so many different things that can happen that make this game not only about how cool your car is, but about how tactical you can get on the board. Um, I do have a review out and like I say, I am in the buyer's guide. If you wanna check that out, you wanna see uh, what the different uh, expansions are that you can, play with and what you can buy right now. The game's for pre-order right now for at least a couple more weeks as this video is being posted. Uh, but also, even after that, I will have a build, build guide coming out soon where we'll talk about how the dice probabilities work, the different crew members, and how the different, uh, you know, some different combos and how you can build these cars to make them pretty cool. That's all there is to it. Hopefully you have a great time playing Car Wars 6th Edition. If you have any questions, post them in the comment below. Um, I'll get back to, them, back to you as soon as I can.